Pokemon, a beloved franchise with roots as far back as 1996. I remember as a kid sneaking off to bed early, pulling the covers over my head just to hide the DS light so my parents wouldn't see it peeking out under the door. I would eventually have my DS snatched away from me as I was caught shrieking, getting slashed to a thousand bits by Cynthia's car trap. I'd now be left in tears from the fight and losing my DS for the week. I played all kinds of Pokemon games growing up. The first one I tried was Crystal. I distinctly remember all the crazy sounds and sprites. My favorite sound, maybe my favorite sprite too, was Totodile. <laughs> To my ear. And just like that, I was hooked. I would spend most of my free time in elementary school paging through the Ruby Sapphire strategy guides, circling different things, imagining what I was going to catch, when I was going to catch it, planning on how to take on the next gym. I would draft different teams of all my favorite mons for different runs I planned out in my head and never did. Name a more iconic trio than Sceptile, Tropius, and Fire. Middle school me could never. With that being said, welcome. Welcome to my first Nuzlocke. But this Nuzlocke is different. I'm playing Ultra Sun. I've never played Ultra Sun before. Okay, big deal. You can just look it up, watch other YouTubers, find the perfect strategy. This game's what, seven years old? How hard could it be? I'm doing it blind. I've never played either Ultra games, but I have played Moon once seven years ago. So yeah, you could say I'm extremely unfamiliar with this generation. If for some reason you've stumbled across the video, but have no idea how Nuzlocke works, which at this point is likely impossible, let's quickly go over the rules. Rule number one, you can only catch the first Pokemon you encounter in a route. Even if your favorite Mon has an encounter rate of 1%, even if you crit and knock out the Pokemon, you only get one encounter. Deal with it. Rule number two, all your Pokemon must be nicknamed. This helps you get really attached to them, only to get us to rule number three. If a Pokemon faints in the battle, it's gone. Forever. Toss that sucker in the box, it ain't coming back. And rule number four, the level clause. Your team cannot be stronger than the highest level Pokemon in the challenges. Traditionally, this is gyms or key rival fights, but for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it's a little different. We'll get to it later. With my life story and a basic understanding of Nuzlocke rules behind us, grab a bag of popcorn, open that nice bottle of wine you've been saving, start a bubble bath, and welcome to the Ultra Sun Blind Art Lock. Wait, Art Lock? No, I thought you said Nuzlocke. What, what's an Art Lock? Well, inspired by Moxie2D and a handful of other creators, I'll also be drawing all the Pokemon I catch along the way, but I'm gonna draw really fast. I'm like so short. I thought it was supposed to be in the back of a moving car or like all the other times we've... Is that my body? Oh, wait. I'm a meow. <laughs> what a weird dream. Anyways, like tradition in every game, we are off to get our starter. Welcome to the first member of our art lock, Krusty the Poplio. Okay, listen. These drawings gets better. I was so rusty. I had not drawn on my iPad in a minute and I was just getting used to this and streaming. You'll see. You'll see. Just wait. Just wait. I make my way through Route 1, anxiously awaiting getting those sweet, sweet Pokeballs to start our run. And we can get in our first encounter. Some boy with an orange backpack smacks right in front of me, waving his arms, yelling about Krusty or something or started. I don't really know. I'm not really listening. I don't, I don't really know, but my fight or flight is definitely starting to activate at this point. Oh, his name's Hal. Hi, Hal. And if Pokemon has taught me anything, this man is now my rival. And for some reason, Hal chooses the worst possible starter against us. I just, I don't know. Battle's over. Well, looks like his Nuzlocke is over. Am I right? <laughs> After our fight, we are escorted to the lovely Iki Town and then immediately told to go explore some ruins. I make my way up these countless stairs, run into a girl dressed in all white who is looking very out of place for some ruins. Anyways, this girl seems to have a Pokemon shoved in a gym bag that's definitely a new one. Oh, and the little buddy escaped he's free he looks so happy oh oh no oh no not the spear not the i'll save you little bubba hold on Mr. Tapu. The girl tells me her name is Lily, and the little cosmic cloud is Nebby. I wonder if it'll ever stay inside that gym bag. Oh well, that's not my problem. Lily escorts us back to the city. Oh, and turns out she's the professor's assistant or something, but I feel like I've seen her somewhere. I'm not really sure. The only thing I am sure of is Nebby is never going to stay in that bag. Mr. Kahuna gives us a sparkly charm bracelet and the professor tucks me into bed. The next morning, they immediately force me to get up early and go to a festival. On the way, the professor shows us how to catch Pokemon. And with Pokeballs, you know what that means. It's time for our first encounter, baby. Meet Sab the Grubbin. 
oh and these little buddies are named after my chat if they seem weird or the names make no sense or something like that it's because they're members of my community already and if you like this video so far i'd really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel link to my twitch is in the bio below if you want to catch me do some of these lives okay thanks bye well with that rude interruption out of our way i make my way along the route beat a couple of trainers i rush through a cutscene, eager to get to my next encounter and how once again comes storming through talking about the festival or whatever and we have another battle crusty makes quick work of how after just a couple of easy water guns hollow the kahuna explains the island challenge to us and the totems and the islands and the z moves and the kakunas kahunas wait what is this where's the gyms where's the, where's the elite for so you see in most games there's a well okay one two game there's 16 gym badges then a victory road but sun and moon break the formula we'll be collecting z moves or as i like to call them charms are charms bracelet sometimes we'll face captains sometimes we'll face big totem pokemon sometimes we'll face other things and sometimes people just hand charms to us it it, it seems different it's fine you'll get used to it but there's still an elite four so the next day Day, Lily escorts us to the professor's lab where we get our second encounter. Meet Delgle the Wingle. See, I told you these drawings were going to get better. I meet up with the professor. He gives us a Pokédex, Rotom Dex. I go back outside. There's a Lunar Eclipse? Man, this game has a lot of cutscenes. I make my way to the trainer school, pick up the fourth encounter, Okudge the Grimer, and wipe the floor with the school teacher. Oh, yeah. This is where we meet Elima, the next trial captain. The pink hair makes me think fairy for what whatever our challenge is going to be but looks like we're off to verdant cave for our first trial the first stop on the way to verdant cave is hyoli city beachfront where i catch this dog change my outfit and rip a sticker off the wall until somebody has the audacity to bother me during my sticker ripping wait who are these guys oh team skull Meh. next then we fight elima to prove we're ready for the trial okay oh what like this battle supposed to be hard Oh, wait, did you guys want to see the fight? Okay, basically it went poison, harden, poison, then harden, then poison, then harden, then poison, then harden, then poison, then harden, then poison, then water gun. After the fight, Lily gets really existential and reveals to us she is essentially the human embodiment of a Pokemon Center? I don't know. I didn't really listen to her, but she's always healing and pulling stuff out of her bag besides Nebby. But I ignore that. I pet the Taros on the nose again and get our next encounter on Route 2, Snack the Ekans. With Snack in hand, I stop at Big Wave Beach, which still is not Vardic Cave in the trial. Team Skull is back trying to ruin my beach fun, and Okudge takes down the drowsy easy peasy. Leaving the beach refreshed, I get another encounter, Schmeargle. Wait, uh, never mind. I make a quick stop at the Pokemon Center and finally arrive at this cave where the lovely trial captain Olima wishes us good luck. The trial starts with a couple of simple encounters of Yongoose. Nothing Krusty and Water Gun can't stop. Elima lets Team Skull in here for what I can only assume to be part of the trial and assume them to be dressed up adults that are not actually part of Team Skull. But in reality, it's a threat on my life. Ironically, these numbskulls are the only reason I catch the gumshoes that's been running around this cave. The trial guide lets me pass and we start our first totem fight. I send out Okudge getting off a quick bite. Gumshoes drops my speed, then calls in an ally. Wait, an ally? Wait, 2v1? 2v1? This fight? Okay, now I see what's going on here. Gumshoes hits me with a hard tackle, and I retaliate with a small bite. I didn't want to lose Okudge, and his health is starting to get fairly low, so I either swap, heal, or pray. I opt for a quick heal, but the Yongoose lowered my defense, making Okudge unable to tank two rounds of hits. If I want to leave him in, he's going to faint. I swap in Dog Dog, hoping to be a little tankier, and he was. I get a heal off on Okudge and get a clean switch back in. I poison the Yongoose, trying for a stall tactic at this point. Why I didn't poison the Gumshoes is beyond me. My inexperience with more competitive type battling is really coming out in these scenarios, especially them being 2v1. But regardless, I take out the totem with two clutch bites. Alima hands us our first charm for our charm bracelet. And just like that, what could go wrong? This Nuzlocke and stuff is easy. The professor explains those charms or Z powers. Let's our Pokemon do a special attack once a fight. Moving on to the next city after hearing that lecture, we encounter Spiro the Spiro and get another Pokemon to add to our roster. And let me get back in that bag. Get back here. So help me. God, I don't want to go in that cave. <sighs> I have to go after him, don't I, Lily? Yeah, that's what I thought. Chasing after the little bugger, I get our next encounter, step up to the Okorio and catch up to Mr. Refuses to stay in the bag. Making my way out of the cave, Nebby in hand. Oh, hey, how? Oh, you want a battle? Oh, okay, I guess we can do that. How leads with Litten and we have an easy takedown with Krusty and Water Gun. He switches to Pikachu and we switch to Okudge for a quick KO and back to Krusty for an easy Water Gun to clean up against his Noibat. And just like that, it's time for our first evolution, Brione. With our newly evolved Krusty, we make our way to the first Kakuna. I mean, Kahuna. 
Wait, I felt like my team was strong enough to take on the Kahuna, even though the whole team was not at the level cap. I was feeling confident. I didn't have any losses at this point. They explained the typing. How hard could this tutorial island really be? I knew he was fighting because I listened, but for reasons beyond me, I left most of the flying type Pokemon in the box. Well, regardless, the fight's starting. Hollow begins with Machop and I send out Okudge. For some reason, I start with a Harden? What? With poison or anything else being an option? Anyways, this is my inexperience showing yet again. Machop leads with a focus energy. I counter with a poison gas, hoping to get in some chip damage. And Machop hits with a, a revenge. Bro, why does that do so much? Oh, that's why. <laughs> At least poison did a little bit of chip. Uh, being at half health, I swap in Snack and, of course, Holly heals the poison. Snake bites for the tiniest bit, gets a flinch chance in. After the flinch, we land a little wrap. Machop revenge and leaves Snack with almost no health. I swap out Snack, forgetting wrap now goes away, and go in with Krusty. I hit Machop with a water gun, but I have a fairy type move and I just... Wait, wait, no, that's, that's too much damage. Oh, it's the crit. Wait, Krusty, no. <laughs> I wanted to give up right there. I wanted to just quit and start over. Who even cares about this run? My starter. I've, I've never lost where I can't use this anymore. My first little buddy. He was supposed to go all the way. Now he's gone. But, but no. I pick myself up by the bootstraps. Krusty would want us to win this godforsaken fight. I sent out Okudge with an acid spray. And oh, that's a, wait, that's another one. What about, what about Sab the Grubbin? Oh, another one what is this machop okay i'll use dog dog that'll the, the normal type will will will, will fix this <laughs> how about snack wait wait that's almost everyone well okay step up two it's all left to you i guess i i guess you could say it's time to step up i don't know there, there's probably something there well step up two outspeeds the machop and peck does it i get one pokemon down i i avenge the machop at least Hala sends out Makuhita. Peck does about one third. I just need to land two more of these to live. Makuhita hits with some Arn Thrust. It, it doesn't do much. And another Peck from Step Up 2 gets the takedown. Hala sends out his final Mon, Crabrawler. But I'm really worried about the Z move he still has left. This man has still not used it and taken out five of my six team members. I hit with a trusty Peck and it does almost nothing against this Crustacean. And the big Z move, I, I think that's going to be the knockout. But Okorio survives with eight health. Let's go. And after a couple minutes of potions and pecking, I know, not the cleanest win, but we get a charm for our charm bracelet. At this point, almost my whole team is gone, but Oracorio, Wingle, and Spiro. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never... Can understand. someone tell me why I didn't use any of the fine Pokemon during this fight, but Oracorio? After the fight, I'm forced to take a picture with all my fallen Pokemon. This is really traumatic. <laughs> No, he's dead. Uh, why would they do that? <laughs> this is painful. Uh, fighting. Confirm. Can I stop now? I want to quit. I don't want to be here. You like the photo of my dead friends? How congratulates us on all of their deaths, which only adds insult to injury. But what does he know? His Nuzlocke sounded twice at this point. Back in Haoli City, I meet a very tan Professor Oak, which is very confusing. Ride the waves to Akala Island, meet back up with the professor, and Nebby, I swear to God, get back in the book! Milo and Olivia greet us outside Hea Hea City, and based on their outfits alone, I'm guessing fairy and grass type events are headed our way. Okay, sure, little buddy. I'm going to ruins with you. You're probably just going to take a little bit of time. Okay, let's go. Oh, and on our way to the ruins, I banged into some randos in front of this fountain. They are important, but I do randomly lose Delgol to them. I'm, I'm still numb to the loss from earlier at this point, so this is completely unfazed me right now. Outside the city in Route 4, I slowly start to rebuild the Fallen team and catch Lillipup, aptly named Pup, because Chat and I were too sad to think about anything else. Our next stop is Panolia Town, only to be ambushed by Howe again, and to body this man! Uh. After the Howl fight, Spiro evolves, but I accidentally drew a flying chocolate bunny? And it's fine. Like a scenic stop at the ranch, only to abruptly battle. A couple of silly mistakes, and um, huh. I lose Pup. Ugh. Okay, I'm sorry I'm new to this. I'm gonna be careful going forward, even though I, I uh, it's fine. After the pup accident, I weigh hide at Miss Mallow and her magnificent mill tank, which was reminding me of someone. Someone from Gen 2. 
Hmm. And maybe I'll think about it later. At this ranch, I catch Marshmallow the Mareep and get stopped by some fake trees. So I have to turn around in the other direction and see Hal again. Hey, Hal. Wait. Who's that? Who are, who are you talking to? Bro, I don't even know this guy. But okay, fine. Let's fight. It was an easy win with Step Up 2 knocking out all his Pokemon. And I... I might be a little over leveled at this point on accident, but it's fine. Whatever. Okay. Hi, Gladia. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. I don't know why you're so angry. After the fight, we get our next evolution for Flappy the Marshmallow. Following that very strange encounter with Gladia, I head down the route to Brooklet Hill to do the next totem fight. We meet Lana, learn to ride a Lapras, and fight a couple of water Pokemon. Step Up 2 makes quick work of everyone until, until we get to the big one. Araquanid. Araquanid. I don't know. I start with step up two and lead with an air cutter to take almost half of the spooter's health. But like the other unfair totems, it calls for help. However, Masquerain's hopefully no threat with the type advantage. Step up two hits with a second air cutter. Gets both of them fairly low. I get outsped though and will easily lose step up two if it gets hit again. I opt for a super potion to heal back up and tank both the hits no problem. One more air cutter and Araquanid lives with just a sliver of health and calls in another. Oh my god! You know, these totem Pokemon are really hard to fight without losing someone. Hmm, it's almost like these fights are kind of set up to be beaten as a team and purposely sacking and transitioning in. When I went into this Nuzlocke with no information, I, I remembered the totems, but they're, they're seeming like no fair at all. Wait, I wonder how this ranks on, on the hardest Nuzlocke's. It's literally the hardest one. This is explaining a lot. Regardless, another quick heal only to get a crit. I have a chance here of living from partially two hits, but if I get in another air cutter and then I don't take out both, but they're but they're both low, I'll just I'll just hit the button. I'll just air cutter and they both go down. Uh, and that's another charm to our charm bracelet. I make my way back to Brooklyn Hill, get Fishy the Feed Bass, only to quickly evolve them into the magnificent Milotic. Okay, I want to note here, this is supposed to be a trade evolution in Ultra Sun, but I'm new to the system that this game is running on, and I just let myself evolve it, okay? I should have looked for when it could have got access to a prism scale, but it's fine. The Feed Bass is Milotic now. Let's just move on. With Milotic in hand and the Water Charm on our bracelet, I can take on these fig trees from earlier. Progressing through Peniola Ranch, I reach the Royal Avenue and the Royal Battle Battle royale dome i i don't know when wait when was i making my way here what even is this place the professor walks down some stairs but is looking like a fully fledged mass wrestler and refusing to act like he knows who i am he's such a weird guy he goes on blabbering about this four person battle and yada yada, yada. wait wait right now we're battling this right now well all right marshmallow do your best wait 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 wait. why is everyone attacking me wait red hell <laughs> no 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 that's not i, I fainted i lost now in my pure shock, I made a deal with the devil. I had no clue about this style of fight given the blind run. I didn't remember it from that one time I played this game forever ago. I said to chat, if Marshmallow, if Marshmallow is not fainted, when I look at the party, it's not counting. No, uh I think it's too devastating for me right now. I only have four Pokemon. <laughs> and it didn't faint. Like if it's dead in my, if it's fainted in my party, I'll count it. If it's not fainted in my party, I won't count it. I lose my, let's see. Okay. If it's fainted, I'll, I'll get rid of it. If not, I'll keep it. Okay, I'm gonna keep it. It's not fainted. And sure enough, perky as ever. Anyways, we make our way to Wella Park and get our next encounter in. Female sandlet named Burrito. That sure was lucky. With Salanded in hand, we climb to the top of the volcano in Wellet Park. I guess some poses of these Marowaks. Battle a couple of trainers. And honestly, this has been such a breeze with our tanky water type fishy the melodic. Wait. Wait, fishy. Yeah, that that's gonna be too much damage. Oh uh, the poison's gonna be too much! Don't do eight! Don't do eight! Don't do eight! Why did it do so much? Okay, well, at least this Marowak is almost dead. Ugh. Anyways, we got a fire charm for our bracelet. I solemnly make my way down the mountain with the weight of the Milotic crushing my small little shoulders. The fire charm on our bracelet lets us pass through the tunnel, heading straight for Mallow's trial. Along our way up to Route 8, I stop for another encounter to replace our recent water loss and pick up Flash Drive the Chin Chow. I spot the International War Tribe Colrus taking a sunny island vacation and say hello and arrive at the trial, but not before making a quick, quick pick 
stop to pick up Bobcat, the luscious locks Diglett. Mallow asks us to pick up some of her favorite treats in the jungle. We make a big pot of soup for all of our friends. And just like that, Alpha Mantis. Oh, that's an easy KO with a flying attack on Spearoth. Wait, wait, what's behind me? <laughs> so we begin the totem fight against Lorantis. And of course, we have Flash Drive out in front. With this stark realization, I switch to Spearoth, but immediately lose half my health with a Solar Blade. And now here we go with this 2v1 BS from earlier that all the totems got. I feel a little desperate, hoping I can keep the damage low enough and go for a Z move just to play some pressure on the Lorantis. And the Lorantis hits with an X Scissor, just, just does a little bit. Um, and the Z move does almost half with a crit. But trouble is a brewing with this Kecleon. Kecleon has Sunny Day and sets it up. Now, the Lorantis can use Solar Blade each turn. I can't get free switches in. It does so much damage. These 2v1 stink! Being at low health with Harsh Sun, I opt to just take some of the damage and see how a couple turns play out. After a couple turns, I make the unfortunate discovery that Lorantis has Synthesis. So now she's back at full health and we're at square one. Uh, whatever. At this point, I think my best bet is just to potion stall PPs on the Solar Blade. The strategy sucks and isn't common in a lot of Nuzlocke's to use items in battle. And it seems lame, but I'm new to this and I'm doing this blind. A couple turns later, Lorantis seems to be out of PP. I'm not keeping track and I'm talking with chat. And, and we don't have any fight moves on this. Great. I still use Fury Attack and get a bit of chip damage in. I've been wondering what Kecleon's full moveset was. And here we regrettably find out it's Ancient Power, which is super effective on Spearoth. But there's no threatening PP on Lorantis anymore. I hope to make quick work of both of them. I switch in a step up two. I do an Air Slash. It does a good chunk of damage on Lorantis, but Kecleon avoids it. Kecleon's last move is Screech. So I swap in for Marshmallow to remove the debuff on step up two. Marshmallow takes the hit on the switch and... oh. Oh, Lorantis does have some solar blades left. Oh, <laughs> that's too. That's the knock on a marshmallow. No, uh, these totems. At least I get a clean switch now. I go for step up two again. And Lorantis, that it's still got some PP on that solar blade. And Kecleon hits with an ancient power, and that's another Mon down. Well, I mean, I guess at least I get another free switch. I go for Burrito, hit with a Flame Burst, doing half to Lorantis. Kecleon gets some good chip in, but hits us with a super effective Ancient Power. I get one more Flame Burst and Lorantis is knocked out. And another turn later, so is Kecleon. Well, with a couple of casualties, we get a Grass Charm Bracelet now and we go on our merry way. After the trial, I get my next encounter, Monkey the Pessimian. I call up Charizard and fly back to Heia Heia City, meet up with Lily and Mr. Can't Stay in the Bag. We are introduced to Professor Burnett. She explains her theory about Ultra Beasts, other dimensions, and all this stuff. I don't, we're 11. Why is she telling us all this? But we prepare for our next Kahuna fight against Olivia. Her trial is just a short jaunt through Diglett Cave where we pick up Eep the Zubat and wipe the floor with a couple of skull runs. Outside of Diglett Cave, Olivia was not waiting for us. What the heck? She said she was going to be. But her probe pass is at home and has a note stuck to it that tells us to meet her at the Ruins of Life. Heading to the ruins, I catch Ooga Booga, the ghastly, and do a bit of training to evolve Eek and Flashlight. Just outside of the ruins, a Team Skull leader is waiting for us. And again, I want to point out there's an adult who does not help this poor child against a villainous organization. But anyways, we win no problem. It's not a big deal. Lily and Burnett come strolling through now that Team Skull is gone. Nebby is still not in the bag. Homie, if he's not a secret, let's just stop pretending, okay, Lily? Olivia was ready to battle us at the ruins, but I learned my lesson from the first Kahuna. I spent some time getting my Pokemon to the appropriate level cap, evolve Ooga Booga and Bobcat in the process. There was no issues against this Rock-type Kahuna, with Flash Drive and Monkey making quick work of all three of her mods. I lose nobody and get my newest Rock Charm for the bracelet and head to the next island. After the fight, Hal rushes up to us. He refuses to go anywhere by himself. So I hold his hand and we head to Hano the Great Resort to meet an Aether Rep before going to the next island who has something to do with Professor Burnett's research. At the Hano Great Resort, we meet Faba, who defo has some creepy villain vibes, but regardless, Hal and I hop into his yacht and head off to some paradise island. Once we get a quick tour, we meet Lusamine, who, okay, seems super nice and really long blonde hair, but again, is giving villain vibes. Uh... Uh, why is this small island shaking violently? What's going on? Uh, huh? Wait, wait, what is that? I've never seen a Pokemon like that before. It came out of a... Oh, 
It came out of the wormhole. Oh my God, Professor Burnett was telling us about this earlier. Wait, is no one else gonna do anything about this? Fine, I'll go take a look at this frillish looking thing. A battle? Oh my God! Flash Strike gives it a couple of electric moves and it, it just vanishes? Hmm. Okay, whatever. That was weird. Well, apparently those were Ultra Beasts. I wonder if my adolescent brain is going to remember long enough to tell either of professors what we just saw. After all this Pacific Rim-based drama, Hal and I are off this Aether Paradise and headed to Ula Ula Island. I wonder what adventures will wait us there. Well, right off the bat, Hal is wanting to battle us. We just got off the boat, boy. Like, please give me a second. And we take him down. Little issues as per usual. What is that? His third, four, fourth Nuzlocke climb? I don't know. He, he's getting further each time, though. I'll give him that. After the fight, I take a quick trip to the Pokemon Center and meet the professor for afternoon tea in Melee Garden. I do remember to tell him about the Ultra Beast and pick up our next encounter. Kitty the Meow. This one's a cheeky baga. I leave the garden, help Lily find some book, meet Acerola, and head toward the next trial. To get to the next trial, you need to take a bus to the top of Mount Okanali. The trial on the mountain is electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. I won't bore you with all the details, but just know I really, really thought this totem was going to be Vicavolt. I mean, just look at that statue. Well, we take down the totem, Togenamaru, with little difficulty, getting a lucky crit and having some great type advantaging. Another charm for our bracelet. Let's go. Oh, and now we have a Salazzle. Heading down the mountain, we meet the professor again, who's in the garden, and getting accosted by some grunts. Team Skull again? One of them happens to be the big, bad, burly boss of Team Skull Guzma. Guzma makes fun of me trying to do my island challenge. It's on! I lead with Uga Booga, and Guzman sends out Galissapod. I wanted to do some strong chip damage and opted for the stab option of sha It doesn't matter. Um, that sucker punch one-shot me, okay? Um, I switch in the very tanky flash drive. And try charge me. I'm, I want to increase the special attack and sweep the whole team. Glissopod emergency exits because he gets below half. But I hold steady to the plan. Masquerade hits with a really strong bug buzz. But after a potion, flash drive should be good to go. But bug buzz keeps doing over half and it's impossible to outspeed. I've got to think of something else. I, I need a clean switch, but I need to heal again. So I'm going to go for burrito. Should be resistant against most of Masquerade's attacks as well. I do a Z power flash fire to finish. Never mind, air cutter KOs. After some unfortunate switches again, we lose Bobcat and Spearoth as well. How did this battle go so wrong? Guzman has managed to knock out four of my Pokemon without losing any of his. Is this going to be the wipe? I've been here before, right? Hala on the first island? I've come so far. How could I let a simple trainer fight with only two Pokemon go so wrong? <sighs> Flashlight manages to finish off the Masquerade, but not for losing most of her health. I opt to switch out Monkey and hoping to finish off Galissapod with a fighting type Z power move. It, it does not. I heal up, but I get one shot by Razor Shell anyways. <laughs> Come on, Flash Ride, it's up to you. And we did it, but we lost most of our Pokemon in the process and there's a totem fight right around the corner. I'm forced to rebuild my team yet again with the scrap that's left in the box. Flash Drive, Kitty, and Fury. Not exactly the dream team here. With the new team in hand, I head south down Route 11 and catch Mr. Grumpy the Panchan, ride a Mudsdale across some rocky terrain, capture Vessi the Torkoal, and fish for Donna the Wishy Washy. Now that we've got a full team, I take some time to train up Mr. Grumpy before meeting Ace Rolla outside and abandon Supermart. After taking a couple pictures of ghost Pokemon on our newly upgraded phone, Acerola starts screaming at us to leave, which is weird because she invited us in the first place. Oh, it was Mimic you all along. I send out Mr. Krusty, super confident in my strong, trained up dark type, but I forgot Fairy was a type. Okay, I'll send out Eek. Eek managed to break the disguise in the Mimikyu, so I'm really confident in this strong dark. Never mind. Okay, I'm confident in this. Okay, I don't I don't know. Let's just try tanky flash drive. Bayonet debuffs too much, so I swap to Vessi, and then I have to swap to Kitty, who also swaps and then just goes down. And but at least I have a chance to heal up Vessi. Mimikyu is fairly low at this point. I have a decent chance with flash drive living again. I just have to sack Vessi, but at least I have a full health of flash drive. I I go for the Z move knockout on Mimikyu and it it lives on one health! You gotta be kidding me! And that that there is the chaotic fight that lost me the run. There's not a story about retribution here. I, I didn't try again. There's there's no story about a, a, a whole set of runs where alternate me is actually one. No story about how chat graciously lets me try this fight again. Sometimes this is just it. A story about a streamer who, who tried their first Nuzlocke and failed miserably.
Thank you all so much for watching my first video on this new channel. It was really a passion project of mine over the last couple of months, but if you managed to stay around for this long, I would really appreciate a like, sub, comment, interacting with this video in any way possible. And if you liked me so much, consider giving me a follow over there on Twitch. Catch you on the later. <laughs> Catch y'all later. Catch you on the next one. Peace.